Live from the Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, this is KCAL 9 News at 8. Tonight, 8 o'clock, shocking sex charges against a popular Orange County water polo coach. Investigators are now looking for more victims. And one day after the shooting at YouTube headquarters, we're learning new details on the shooter and a possible motive, plus what her family is saying tonight. And 50 years later, a nation remembers the life and death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But first, we begin with breaking news tonight. A deputy involved shooting. This is in East Los Angeles. Stu Mandel is live in Sky 9 over the scene. Stu. Elsa, Jeff, happening out here at the 1000 block of Leonard, near the cross of Whittier in this area, East Los Angeles. Deputies from the East Los Angeles Sheriff's Department arrived out here. They were confronted with a suspect wielding a knife. Now, we do know shots were fired from the deputy. That suspect alive, taken to a local hospital by LA County Fire. Right now, this area, crime scene. Off, uh, deputies are here on scene, and they're going to be calling in other agencies. They're going to lock this down, and they're going to investigate exactly how the shooting took place live in Sky 9 over the East Los Angeles area. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you two in the studio. Okay, Stu, thank you so much. Disturbing sex assault allegations tonight against a veteran Orange County water polo coach. That's right. He is accused of molesting seven young girls. And investigators believe there might be more victims. KCAL 9 Orange County reporter Michelle Gili has details from Santa Ana. The allegations involve seven juvenile players and allegations of sexual abuse that is said to have occurred during one on one practice sessions in Los Alamitos. Meantime, the coach's lawyer is saying tonight that in 20 plus years of coaching, there hasn't even been, quote, a whiff of scandal. There was one victim who faced the sexual abuse while 14. There are four other victims who faced the abuse at ages 15 and younger. Abuse allegedly committed against seven girls by this Orange County water polo coach, who authorities are identifying as Baram Hojra. The 42 year old from Irvine is the founder, according to his lawyer, of International Water Polo Club. It's an amateur team most recently meeting at a pool on the Los Alamitos Joint Forces training base. Victims number Jane Doe number one and Jane Doe two spoke to their parents about the allegations and their parents in turn notified Child Protective Services. Child Protective Services doing their job appropriately contacted Los Alamitos Police Department. The coach's defense attorney told me by phone this afternoon that his client has pleaded not guilty to 22 counts dating back to 2014. Police began investigating the claims by the water polo players this past January. According to Ricardo Nicole, he says the girls alleged that the sex crimes happened in the pool. Baram Hojra is a club coach who also coached in the past at Orange County High Schools. His lawyer says he had a spotless record until these accusations were made. Quote, so the question we have to answer is, did a coach after 20 years in the sport with an impeccable reputation without any hint of this happening previously become a serial groper 20 years into coaching? As of today, the coach is free on bail. USA Water Polo has suspended him and has also revoked his regional seat on a board. In Santa Ana, Michelle Geely, KCAL 9 News. Still a lot of questions tonight surrounding yesterday's shooting at YouTube headquarters in San Bruno, including whether that incident could have been prevented. But new details are emerging about the shooter who was from Southern California and what she was doing leading up to the rampage. KCAL 9's Tom Waite begins our team coverage. The YouTube campus is still a crime scene at this point. Investigators are still trying to comb through clues and piece all of this together. At YouTube's San Bruno campus, a stream of staffers trickled back into the building a day after a woman opened fire here. Police remained at the complex and crime tape sealed off the area. Meanwhile, police revealed new details about the shooter, 39-year-old Nassim Ogdam, and what she was doing in the hours before her rampage. Ogdam was apparently doing some target practice at a range nearby. She was at the, uh, the, the gun range early uh, the morning of the incident. 
Police have not identified the gun range, but law enforcement officers were seen entering the Jackson Arms Range in South San Francisco this morning. A witness there reported seeing someone they thought was Ogdom yesterday before the shooting. We've also learned from Mountain View Police that they found Ogdom sleeping in her car just after 1 a.m. yesterday morning. Mountain View is about 35 miles from the YouTube San Bruno campus. Mountain View officers located Ogdom after her family reported her missing and in that area. Area. Mountain View police say they were told by Ogdom's father she was upset about YouTube restricting her video content, but said her father never reported she may be violent or armed. She was not detained. There was nothing by her body language, her, her conversation, her uh, demeanor, or the information that we received, we received from the family that suggested that we should handle this in any other manner in which the officers handled it. As for motive, San Bruno police say Ogdam was likely targeting YouTube because she was angry over those restrictions on the videos mm -hmm. she posted. It is believed that the suspect was upset with policies and practices of YouTube. Forensic investigators are combing through her website and social media accounts for more clues. Online, she ranted against YouTube for how they treated her. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube. We also learned today from investigators that Ogdam likely entered the YouTube campus from a parking garage around lunchtime, then started shooting at her victims before taking her own life. Two of the three shooting victims have been released from the hospital. They are two women. They have not been identified yet. A third man is still hospitalized. His condition has been upgraded from critical to serious. Reporting from San Bruno, I'm Tom Waite, KCAL 9 News. Today, Google released this statement from YouTube that reads in part, Thanks to the security protections in place, she never entered the building itself. We are also revisiting this incident in detail and will be increasing the security we have at all of our offices worldwide. Right now, the family of the shooter lives in Riverside County, and tonight they're expressing sorrow for what exa exactly happened. Her father says that she was angry at YouTube and even warned police. OK, Conine's Randy Page has more tonight from Menifee. The Ogden family is asking for privacy, so we moved across the street to honor that request. This is an extremely devastated Iranian family. I'm sorry, I can't believe it. Nassim Ogden's father, Ismail, emerged from his home this afternoon only long enough to hand out this written statement, which says, in part, our family is in absolute shock and can't make sense of what has happened yesterday. Although no words can describe our deep pain for this tragedy, our family would like to express their utmost regret, sorry for what has happened to innocent victims. Her family tells us 38-year-old Nassim Ogdam came to the United States when she was 18 as a refugee from Iran. They say she was an animal rights activist and vegan. Her YouTube videos show her passion for exercise and activism. She was known as Green Nassim by thousands of followers. Her family says about a year ago, Nassim became very angry when YouTube censored her videos, as Nassim herself explained online. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube, and I'm not the only one. This woman, who told us she was Nassim's aunt but would not give her name, described Nassim's online crusade in this way. Stop eating animals, and YouTube filtered her videos. That way that happened, and I'm so sorry. I feel so bad for the those people shot. Hopefully, they've been alive. And she's so she's angry at YouTube. Yeah, and because you they filter her. I'm so what sorry. Members of Nassim Ogdam's family say the 38-year-old activist had been living with her grandmother in this home in San Diego, which authorities searched today. Ismail told us he warned police that his daughter was angry at YouTube and there could be trouble. So for one year she was angry at YouTube and police said they would watch her in Mountain yeah, View. Yeah, but they didn't. Another aunt told us Nassim was not a violent person. They had no idea she owned a gun or that a tragedy like this could happen. Feeling so bad. Yeah, I'm feeling down. Well, well, I feel so sad for What's the family going through? They're so sad. Did you have any idea she was had this potential to do this? Uh, no, I have any idea. Was she a loving person? Yes, of course. 
So the family is saying they warned police. Police say they never received that warning. One possible explanation is we noticed Ismail Ogden has a very pronounced accent, and this was a telephone conversation when he was talking to police. It is possible that police did not fully understand what he was trying to say. In Menifee, Randy Page, KCAL 9 News. Across the country, people gather to remember the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Bells rang in Memphis where King was shot and killed 50 years ago today. King was shot as he stood on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel. Today, that building is part of the National Civil Rights Museum, which attracted thousands of visitors. It's sort of like going to Mecca. That, that's the experience I have, coming to Mecca, where people from all over the country are here. The 50-year milestone was marked all across the country with marches and ceremonies from Atlanta, where Dr. King was laid to rest to the MLK Memorial in Washington. And here at home today, bells also ringing at 4.01 this afternoon to mark the exact time that he was shot. KCAL 9's Lisa Siegel has more on the Southland's emotional tribute today. Well, all across the Southland at churches like this, schools and other places, the bells chimed as people reflected on what Dr. King meant to them and the world. As people gather together on this, the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the bell at Transfiguration Church in Lamert Park rang 39 times. To represent the number of years the civil rights leader lived, the ringing started at exactly 401 our time to signify the moment that Dr. King died. The ringing of the bells will awaken this community to the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. At the Central Library downtown, pictures of Dr. King from the library's own collection and others are part of two exhibits, and on this day, they take on new meaning. Just to see his his face and to see Coretta on this day, it just puts goosebumps on your arms. It's, it's, uh, it's very emotional to see, frankly. Ben Duprat is from France. As he walked among the images, he told us how Dr. King shaped his view of the world. It shows that uh, if, if the change uh, can start with only a few people or one, one person, you know. Misha House feels the same way. He was a great man and he stood up for us you know, fight against um, prejudice. It is a feeling all these people share as they remember Dr. King. I have a dream. A dream that spread far and wide and a legacy that will live forever. It truly was a beautiful and emotional tribute. A lot of tears, hand-holding, prayers, everyone coming together as one to remember Dr. King. And that exhibit at the library, it runs through May. Back to you. And still ahead here at 8 o'clock on KCAL 9 to look at the man who cut the dream short. The life James Earl Ray lived in L.A. in the weeks before he pulled the trigger. Protesters blocked a Westwood intersection today to show their frustration with the University of California. Students and workers claim there are large racial and gender gaps in UC's workforce and pay. LAPD officers did take people into custody at Wilshire and Westwood. Well, people living in one Echo Park neighborhood tonight are not happy with the way the drivers are getting around traffic. They say Baxter Street has one of the steepest inclines in all of L.A. Many drivers simply have a hard time navigating it. Residents say that there have been a lot of accidents there since the traffic navigation app Waze started sending cars their way to avoid Glendale Boulevard. Well, they say Waze has refused to move that street as a shortcut, so neighbors are now meeting with the city's Department of Transportation to find out a solution. BMW wants to keep you out of Ubers and into your own BeamerFest, their new subscription service that will get you into any car in their fleet. Coming up next. A plan to send the National Guard to the border. I'm Angelica Alvarez at the White House. Coming up, President Trump's plan to secure our border to Mexico. Then a gunman on the loose tonight after a triple shooting at a home in Long Beach. But first, here's a look at the best of L.A. and Orange County tonight on KCAL9.com, where we're always on. KCAL9 News at 8. We'll be right back.